So let's preview what it looks like on the calculator. So we have a random sample of nine light bulbs. So sample is important. That means we'll use X bar and S. And the, these are the light bulbs lifetime and hours. So I went to stat edit and put the data into the calculator. Um, so go ahead and do that if you haven't. And we're gonna keep going. So if we were gonna use formulas, which formula would we use? Because this is a sample, we'll use S, which is the square root of X minus X bar squared all over N minus one. Remember the big difference for samples was dividing by N minus one but the calculator will do that for us. So we're gonna to go to one var stat in the calculator. Um, we put the data into L1 already. So you go to stat, calc, and we're gonna go down to one var stat, and you're gonna type L1, enter. And it'll tell us the mean and standard deviation. So I get a mean of 764.51. I usually like to do one more decimal place than the data. So the data had one, now I have two. And then S, not sigma, would be the 143.42. Cool. And so that's, if we did that by hand, we'd do all those crazy tables, but let's save some time and do one on the calculator. All right, so let's answer some follow-up questions. If you were gonna buy 23 light bulbs, and we wanted to like run them back to back, so just use one after the other in the same lamp, how long would they last? So how many total hours? So we have 23 light bulbs, and I expect each individual light bulb to last about 764.51 on average, right? Some will be a little longer, some will be a little shorter, but on average, 764.51 and then in hours. So these are both in hours. So I can just go ahead and multiply times 23. So we would expect it to last 17,583.73 hours if we had 23 light bulbs back to back. All right, and then I just copied the data down. So since you can't see the data when I zoom in, so this is just the data from above. And I have a new thing. Um, what percentage of the data lies within one standard deviation? Um, so there's kind of two things here. First, we have to figure out what within one standard deviation is, and then we'll find a percentage. So within one standard deviation means the mean, and then within tends to mean plus or minus. So we can be basically over or under by one standard deviation. So we're gonna take 764.51 and we'll add and subtract the standard deviation of 143.42. So this is answering the purple part of the question. We'll come to the percentage after. So I will do 764.51, and I always do subtraction first just because that's the smaller number. So I'll subtract and add. So 621.09 to 907.93. And this gives me a range of numbers. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through the list of data and figure out how many of the data values are within this range. So 701 would be in between that range. 660 is in that range. 667 is in between these two numbers. 769. 960 would be outside, 876 makes it, 820 makes it, 913 and 511 are not inside the range. So basically to find the percent, that's the second part of the question. Um, six of them are between the numbers and there were nine total numbers. So six divided by nine should get you 0.6667, which is 66.67%. Cool, so let's do the same thing with two standard deviations. It's the same question. So we're gonna find the percentage second, and we're gonna find the range for two standard deviations first. So the difference here is we're gonna take the mean, 
we're going to add and subtract for the word within, but we're going to multiply the standard deviation by 2. So 764.51 plus or minus 2 times 143.42. So we're going to double the standard deviation before we add and subtract. So now we're at we're going a little bit farther out and we're going to add and subtract 286.84. And these percents will be really significant, which we'll see in a later section. Um, right now we're just kind of practicing the math behind it. So I'm going to subtract first and then add. So my range of numbers is 477.67 up to 1051.35. And then we can go ahead and calculate the percent. So I'm going to go through the numbers and see which ones are within this range. So 701, 660, yeah. As I go through, it looks like every single number is in between these two numbers. So that would be 9 out of 9 or 100%. So we'll see later in section 3.5 the significance of these percents, but just practicing a little bit of algebra now. So that's it.